Hi, my name is Tom Kimber with Melbourne School of Theology, and I'm sitting here today with Catherine Thompson, who has written a book called Christ-Centered Mindfulness. Catherine, tell me a little bit about your background and why you came to write a book on Christ-Centered Mindfulness. So I've been working as a clinical researcher in mental health, and I also have my own private practice. And uh, I became increasingly aware that there's a problem of a lack of information out there about what popular mindfulness is about. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't just impact Christians, but it impacts a lot of our community because they don't realize that it's based in Buddhist meditation. Yeah. And so, my frustration increased to the point eventually where I thought, right, that's it. I'm going to write a book about this so that we actually, so that I could work out what what the true story was and um, to try and integrate it uh, with my Christian faith and measure it against it and try and work out, well, is this okay to practice? And if it isn't, what's the alternative? And so that's what the book's about. So it actually grapples with those ideas. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Recently, I have seen the same thing. Yeah. Um, I've seen coloring books that are mindfulness coloring books and even activities like that. So it really does seem to have moved into the mainstream and not just in religious areas or religious practice, but really in a broader practice like that. So when I saw the book, I was quite intrigued that you're bringing this, these two concepts together. I notice in the book too that you also address things like um, mystics and contemplative and meditation from a Christian perspective. So as you're thinking about mindfulness and these other, these other words, aren't they just different words saying the same thing or is there a fundamental difference between them? Well, that's an interesting um, question because um, we used to talk about um, in the past uh, uh, Buddhist meditation mm -hmm. and it's only in the last 20 years or so that the word mindfulness started to get replaced mm. for the meditation word. Um, and it's interesting because the, the translation, which is our word in English of called mindfulness, actually comes from our Christian tradition, mm. which Christians don't understand that. So mm. what's actually happened is that um, the popular mindfulness movements poached a word that's from our Christian tradition mm. to repackage what Buddhist meditation is. Hmm. Interesting. I've had similar conversations um, when I was living in Asia with people who were afraid about certain Christian prayer practices because they looked too Buddhist and I wondered mm. how much borrowing is going on back and forth between the two, you know, in, in some of these contexts. And so you found with mindfulness that really the, the practice is very deep within the Christian tradition. It is, and um, I think where we forgot our own knowledge in mm, our church tradition was with the Enlightenment because yeah. we started to value thinking and knowledge and science over everything else. Mm. And so, the rational side of us. Yeah, yes. and so the I guess we've swung too far that way and yeah. then we've discounted everything else, mm. which meant that we've lost our traditions that were there for hundreds of years, mm. which were contemplative and yes. prayer based. Yes, interesting. I was just reading a book um, not long ago on um, a form of spiritual reading, Lectio Divina, which again is, is finding a resurgence these days um, in the same way. It's been a part of our tradition for, for many, many years, and now it's, 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 it's gaining a new audience. But in this particular book, the author was suggesting exactly the same thing of approaching that with mindfulness and actually used that, that, that word as a means of being attentive to the presence of God, being attentive to what God is doing in the moment as I am mm -hmm. meditating on the scriptures and the same concept. And he was, he was coming at it from the same perspective that this is something that we have lost. Let's regain, let's reclaim mm -hmm. what is rightfully ours. 
I know, and I think we've, uh, too, for too long, we've missed the opportunity of speaking into this space. And um, what I think is really sad is if Christians take up the popular mindfulness mindfulness as a way of improving their well-being, mm. but they don't realise that there's actually a Christian um, alternative which would be far more suitable for them. From your perspective and your experience, Catherine, um, as I said, I've seen things like, you know, mindfulness activities mm -hmm. like coloring and things as a way of reducing stress. Is there a a popular understanding of mindfulness that really separates it from the spiritual aspect of it and really because we've seen the same thing in meditation haven't we where it becomes an activity separated from the spiritual content that you and I both understand and bring into that have you seen the same thing in mindfulness yeah, so I think that it's a bit of a marketing <laughs> thing mm. because to make it more palatable to everyday people they've um, taken out some of the um, basic parts of Buddhism and just taken the meditation component and used that and applied that as a tool. Mm. But that would be like um, taking a practice from Christianity um, and taking all of the values and reasoning and theology away from it. Mm -hmm. So it actually doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah. And I think for uh, um, from a theological perspective, I have a problem with mm. applying a tool um, with ignorance mm -hmm. because there is a spiritual component. Yeah. And if you think deeply about it, if you are sitting and practicing mindfulness and emptying your mind, yes. if, if you're approaching it that way, which is the popular mindfulness mm -hmm. um, way, um, theologically, it's our spirit within us that is the quiet part of ourself which is doing the mindful focus mm -hmm. and then if we're Christians we understand that is where God's Spirit speaks to us. Mm -hmm. So if we're opening ourselves up to this space as Christians God will speak to us mm -hmm. but what happens if we don't have that faith or we're not doing it in that faith context? Mm -hmm. I have a real um, worry about what that is opening people yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I think, you know, the spirit world is a real world. Yeah. And as we become attentive to that, yeah. we become attentive not only to God, but really the larger spiritual realm. As, uh, as you have um, introduced this concept mm. to perhaps people that you're working with or mm. the, the larger public, what's been the response of people? Have they been receptive to the idea or is there an apprehensiveness? How have, how have you seen this uh, affected in the lives of, of people? So what can be really mind blowing for people with anxiety and depression mm -hmm. is that they often say that part of their um, struggle with their mental health is that they feel disconnected from God mm -hmm. and um, their faith becomes really hard to practice and they mm -hmm. can't concentrate to pray. They can't like they'll read the Bible, but once they've read the words, they've like forgotten them already. Sure. And so actually applying these older contemplative methods to prayer and to reading scripture is uh, like opens a whole new world to them which is mm. helpful for their mental health but also helps them reconnect to God in a different way which they can do mm -hmm. and so I think you know there's a whole whole um, whole area there which I've seen has helped people break through mm. like that barrier with feeling disconnected mm -hmm. from God. Mm -hmm. I can't help but think that some of what has brought um, the whole mindfulness, uh, meditation, contemplation, uh, concepts of things um, further in, in our thinking and in, yeah. in our society today is what we have seen is a rise in anxiety, a, a greater uh, experience of stress and things like that. Do you see the same thing that as those experiences have, they seem to have become more and more common. Mm -hmm. uh, I work with a lot of students who really talk about stress and, and anxiety. And so I think alongside this are these kinds of practices mm -hmm that are becoming more popular. Have you seen the same thing in your, yeah. in your work with people? 
Yeah, because uh, the practice of, of slowing down and focusing on one thing, whether it be scripture or praying in a particular way, actually focuses your mind. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that you struggle with when you're really stressed or anxious. Yes. And so it can actually help um, focus you and calm you mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. um, so it is really helpful for your well-being. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that completely answers yeah. what you were... No, I think, it's, yeah. I think that's helpful. Anything else you'd like to say about, um, about this book? And I'm interested too in the subtitle, Connection to Self mm. and God. Mm. So we think of mindfulness, we think of meditation as connection to God. What about the connection to self part? Well, that's interesting because popular mindfulness is all in the Western context is all about self. Mm. So it's very selfish. Mm. And um, I think the difference for Christians is that our goal and where we want to head in life is to become more Christ-like mm -hmm. um, and uh, to have connection to self and God at the same mm. time is ultimately what we want because when we think about Christ's transforming presence in our lives, mm -hmm. um, it's a two-way relationship and it goes to what John talks about of the vine and branches mm. and abiding. Um, in Jesus, the true vine, mm -hmm. and and this is what um, Christian or Christ-centered mindfulness actually is mm. in practice: is mm. to learn that abiding relationship, 24 hours a day, yeah. where there's a two-way listening and speaking, mm. and um, God's Spirit actually speaking into that still part of us, mm -hmm. and so that we can hear. The practice of being still means that we're open to hearing that. Mm. Yeah. I think too that the subtitle, um, it reminds me a little bit too of, of Calvin's uh, observation that we grow in our faith, true sanctification, true wisdom mm -hmm. is this growth in our knowledge of God, yes, mm -hmm. but also our knowledge of self. And don't we find that in spiritual formation, the more we discover about God, the more we are abiding in Him and connecting to yeah. Him, the more we discover about ourselves. And that's where that, that growth and that, that, that growth in Christ likeness really comes, mm -hmm. is in, in both of those. And so I, I, I really appreciate that you have brought those two concepts together, the, the connection to God, but also the awareness of myself and the connection to self, because that's part of the experience of brokenness that we all, uh, the, we all have, is, isn't it? That, that I, I am sometimes surprised or confused about myself. And so this becomes a way of helping me to understand not only who God is and connect to Him, but who I am. And especially as I am in Christ, mm -hmm. then I grow in that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to say as we wrap up our conversation? I just encourage people to to question um, uh, some things and to it is worthwhile traveling that hard road of trying mm. to weigh up what is presented to you in life and actually what your faith would say to that and trying to weigh them up together mm -hmm. and to not just blindly accept the knowledge that's presented to you mm -hmm. um, in the secular world and to actually thoughtfully try to integrate it into your faith. Yeah, good. Well, thank you. Thank you for the book. Uh, very interesting. And thank you for helping us to navigate these kinds of questions. Uh, very, very helpful. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Thank you.